<laughs> What's up guys, my name is Julie and this is The Curated Curvy where I bring you along for the journey as I attempt to create the curated wardrobe of my dreams with these two hands and today I have for you all a pattern hack. So I've actually never done a pattern hack on this channel before, so it's pretty exciting. I do ask you to bear with me as I am new to tutorials, but I still wanted to show you guys how to get this gorgeous t-shirt from a super basic pattern. So I am going to walk you through the entire process. We're going to talk about the materials that you need. I'm going to take you through the steps of some pattern hacking. We are also going to sew this top together, and in the end, if you so desire, you can have this lovely little cropped flared sleeve bell t-shirt so without further ado let's get into it all right guys so today we are going to be hacking this pattern here this is simplicity 9337 and we're going to take this top and we're going to turn it into a flared sleeve crop top it's going to be glorious so what you're going to need to do this is you're going to need obviously your pattern you're going to need your fabric. I am going to be using this really lightweight rib knit. You see it has like a lot of drape in it. So it'll be really nice for like those long sleeves. It has some slight ribbing through it. I picked this up at a fabric store that is local to me. You're gonna need some thread. I'm gonna go with this fun thread that I found on clearance at the craft store. It's just like multiple colors and I think it'll be a really cool feature to add to the top. You are going to need whatever cutting tools you use. So I have my rotary cutters I have one for paper and I have one for fabric you're also going to need pens or in my case I use pattern weights you're going to need some tracing paper and some tape you're going to need scissors and you are also going to need something to write with now this is it for materials the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to open up this pattern and we're going to get out the pieces that we need so we can begin hacking the top okay now before we talk about the pieces that we need we're going to talk about the size so for this pattern i went ahead and i cut out a size medium per the pattern instructions i would be a size large however if you look at the finished garment measurements which is given on the bottom of the pattern of the finished garment measurements for a size large is a bust of 51 inches. I have a bust of 44 inches. So a bust of 51 inches is going to be seven inches of wearing ease, which is far too much for what I'm comfortable with. However, for the size medium, the finished garment measurements is a bust of 47. For my bust of 44, um, that extra three inches of wearing ease is going to be more than enough. So I went ahead and I cut out a size medium. All right, now we're gonna look at the pattern pieces that we are going to be using. So you're going to need your back, your front, your full length sleeve, and your neckband piece. The first piece that we're gonna work with um, altering is our back and our front. And how we're gonna do this is actually really simple. So before you start altering your pattern, everyone recommends that you go to your iron and you give it a good press to smooth out all of those wrinkles. However, we're living that rebel life over here, so we're not gonna do that. So basically what we wanna do now is we want to crop this top. So this is our short in line. I'm just gonna play off of this short in line and I'm gonna go about an inch and a half below the short in line. And I'm gonna do that also to the front. I'm gonna go an inch and a half down. And then I'm just gonna draw my new cutting line. And that's where I'm gonna cut for both tops. And actually I feel like an inch and a half might be too much. Cause I cut it once and I cut it here. Sorry guys. Let's take out that extra half an inch and just do an inch. And I'm gonna change it on the back too. So again, I'm just taking off that half, that extra half an inch and we're just gonna go one inch down. All right, now I'm gonna get my paper cutter. I'm gonna go ahead and cut along that line. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut along this line. I probably will give these a good press before I actually lay them on my fabric to cut them out because they're wrinkled pretty seriously. We're not gonna do anything to the neckband. We're going to leave that as is. So we can go ahead and set that aside. Now, the next thing that we're going to work with is the sleeve. And before we get started on this, I am gonna take it to my iron. I'm gonna go to my lowest heat setting possible. And I'm just gonna smooth out all of these wrinkles because we are gonna need a pretty flat layer to start with before we begin our alterations. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I've gone ahead and I pressed 
dust out my piece so that it's not as horribly wrinkled as it was before. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna make some lines through this and these are gonna be my cutting lines. Now I have a ruler that has lots of lines through it and so in order to get a straight line, I'm gonna play off of this line. So for my first line that I'm making, I wanna go straight down the center and I'm gonna use the dots up here as my anchor point for the center. So I'm gonna line that up and then I am going to make sure that one of these parallel lines on my ruler is lined up perfectly with the grain line so that I know when I make my first line, it is straight. Okay, so now that I've got that lined up in a way that I'm happy with, I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna go all the way down the pattern. Now, I am going to make every, I think I'm gonna go about every three inches over from that line and I'm gonna make another line. Okay, now I have my lines gone through the pattern and now what I'm going to do is I am going to cut up these lines all the way to the top. But I'm not gonna cut through the top, I'm just going to get my snip as close to this top edge as possible. So I'm gonna do that with all of the lines. Gonna take a piece of paper and we're gonna lay it down on our cutting space and place it onto the paper and then rearrange it so it looks like a sleeve again <laughs> okay so we have our sleeve um, now we're gonna start spreading out the bottom and this is what's gonna give us that flare and that fullness now the more you spread it out the more flare obviously you get you don't want too much the first time I did this it was it was an insane flare and it was just too much fullness so I kind of like where this is at because I want it to kind of create that angle there. If you don't flirt it out too much, if you just do that, you'll get some fullness, but you don't get that nice swoop. So I want a nice swoop on the bottom of my sleeve and that's gonna come from just moving these ends out. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my tape and I'm going to tape down each pattern piece. And you wanna be careful when you do this so as not to move it. Sometimes I like to get pattern weights and I will just place them on each of the pieces so that I know as I'm trying to tape it down, they're not shifting as much as they would otherwise. Now, the next thing that you're gonna do is you're just gonna connect these lines down here so that when you're cutting it out, you have a clear cut um, hem for your sleeve. Now, you can eyeball this, but because I have my French curve, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use that because that's going to give me the best bottom. And this is our new sleeve. Now, the more you slash and spread, the bigger your flare is going to be. This time, I'm going for a little more of a controlled flare. I do have some where the flare is pretty outrageous, and while I do love those shirts, they're, they are kind of hard to wear. So we're going for a bit of a more controlled flare, and in between each one, I have anywhere from one and three quarters of an inch to one and um, one quarter of an inch to one inch.
The first bit of construction is going to be exclusively done on the serger um, just because that is how I prefer to sew together my knits. However, if you are using a regular machine, you can go ahead and use a zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch, look it up in your machine manual, and you can construct it together that way. Another tip is I do not use pens when I'm using my serger. I have been there, done that, had to replace machine parts because of it. So I use clips. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your front and your back and you're going to clip those together along the shoulder seams. Now that I've clipped these together at the shoulder seams, I'm going to go ahead and take them to the serger and I'm going to serge these edges. Okay, so next we're gonna attach the sleeves to the arm side on the flat. I find it easier this way with knits. And so basically what you wanna do is you wanna find the sleeve where right sides together, the notches match. So this notch matches this notch right sides together. So I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna pin that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my notches on this side and my two notches on this side. And then I make a notch in the center of the pattern and I'm gonna connect that there and then I will fill out the rest of it. And we'll turn the sleeve over and we'll do the same thing to this side. basically constructed. Now we're going to go ahead and we are going to attach the neckband. For our neckband, we're going to take it, we're going to fold it in half like this, and we are going to sew along this edge here. Now once that is sewn, you are going to take your neckband, and what I like to do is right here where that notch was in the middle is I snip just a little bit so that you can fold this, this seam like one piece to each side if that makes sense and that's just going to make it lay flatter so you're going to take your neckband after you do that you're going to fold it in half go ahead and clip there and then you're going to just go around and i like to clip at wherever i have a notch okay so now i have my neckband folded and clipped and right sides together we're going to start putting this on so in the back of your neckband you have your seam and then you have your two notches those two notches correspond with two notches that are on the back of the neckband here. So with the raw edges together, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line that up. And then I'm just gonna use my clip that I already have here to clip these all together. Now, the next one that I wanna clip, I'm gonna kinda fold it over like this if that makes sense. The next one that I wanna go ahead and anchor is my center front. So I put a snip in my center front and I would suggest you do the same. So I'm gonna take that clip off and then I'm just gonna go ahead and clip it there, if that makes sense. Now I have all my clips in place. I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna um, sew it. And as I'm sewing it, I'm going to stretch in between each clip. The shirt 
part, for the most part, is constructed. Now the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and finish off the hem. And we are going to do that using a lettuce hem, and I'm gonna do that on the regular sewing machine. So I'm gonna snip off all these extra serger threads, then I'm gonna switch my machines, and we're gonna lettuce hem this thing and be done. if you have stayed and watched the entire thing. I do hope that you enjoyed it and you found the information in the video useful. If you haven't already, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Help your girl out in these YouTube streets if you so desire. And until next time, stay beautiful, make great things. I'll see you later. Bye.